Analytical Chemistry 1, Lesson 23. We looked before at the charge balance equation. There is only one charge balance equation in any equilibrium problem. Another type of equation that must be included, though, is a mass balance equation. Charge balance arises from the fundamental law of the conservation of charge. Mass balance arises from the conservation of matter. The name mass balance is a bit of a misnomer. It is not really balancing the amount that things weigh, but rather is an accounting of all of the atoms involved in the process. The atoms that go in may get distributed amongst different species, but they must be accounted for. A mass balance equation makes those connections. In contrast to the charge balance equation, there can be more than one mass balance. Many problems just have one, but there can be more. One type of mass balance equation compares the analytical concentration, the formal concentration, of a species with the equilibrium concentration of that species in any of the forms it may appear. For example, if you pour some propanoic acid into water, it will partially dissociate into the propanate, propanate ion, but some will remain as undissociated propanoic acid. If we were to have added sufficient acid so that the solution would formally be 0 0.025 molar in propanoic acid, then we could write the mass balance equation. At this point, we do not know how the reaction partitions between the propanate ion and the propanoic acid molecule, but we do know that their sum must be 0 0.025 molar. Another example would be with malonic acid. Note that it has two acidic sites. We might also add sufficient acid so that the solution would formally be 0 0.025 molar in malonic acid. The mass balance equation, however, would be this. We now have three species between which the acid will be distributed. Again, at this point in the problem, we don't know how it splits up between the three, but we do know that their sum must be 0 0.025 molar. Another type of mass balance equation arises when we do not know the analytical concentration of the material. Instead, we know a relationship between the components into which the parent compound dissolved. Indium uh, sulfide, IN2S3, dissolves weakly in water. We can put in a gram of it, but most of it would just remain sitting in the bottom of the beaker. We do not know how much went into solution. However, we do know that however much did dissolve, the stoichiometric relationship must be retained. There must be three sulfide ions for every two indium ions. To create an equation, then, we multiply the indium concentration by three and the sulfide concentration by two. This is also a mass balance relationship. Here is another example along similar lines. Consider lead phosphate. You put it in as lead phosphate. This might seem like the indium sulfide problem, but the additional complication lies with the phosphate. It will further react with water to form the various additional forms all the way up to phosphoric acid. The mass balance equation we would write down is this. There will be three lead ions for every two phosphate ions. To make them equal, we would multiply the lead concentration by two while multiplying the phosphate concentration by three. However, the phosphate can appear in many different forms after reacting with water. So the sum of the various phosphate species must together be multiplied by three.